My name is Jason Lanier, that's J-A-S-O-N-L-A-N-I-E-R. Uh, my title would just be photographer. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. I'm so, the owner of Jason Lanier Photography. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. What, where are you from? I am from Southern California, born and raised. Uh, shot all over the world. And uh, right now I'm out here in West Virginia for uh, one of my workshops. This, this is like my, my second home. So tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, you know, tell me about the type of uh, things that you photograph. I photograph a, a variety of different things. I do weddings. Um, I've shot weddings all over the world. I shoot wildlife um, and landscapes. Last year alone I shot in Africa, Alaska, Ireland, Bahamas. I went to Kruger National Park and shot lions and elephants. And I'll go out to Alaska and shoot the, you know, the grizzly bears and out to cat and the grizzly bears are are 10 feet from me. And no barriers, no zoos, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, I do pinups. I shoot pinups. And, uh, and then I teach a lot of workshops. I love helping other photographers. Wow. So tell me how you got interested in photography. When did that happen? Uh, when I was six years old, I went to the Carlsbad Caverns with my dad. And uh, my dad was a photography enthusiast. He certainly wasn't a photographer, but he loved photography. And he, uh, when we went to the Carlsbad Cavern, of course, that's the old days with film, he took the pictures. And I remember walking into a place kind of like this, where it's really dark, and uh, I thought there's no way the pictures are going to come out. And then we would get the you know, pictures back from the developing. And to see the, it come alive, that's really, that really is what triggered photography for me. And, uh, and it was also a good way to pick up on girls in high school. <laughs> We are at the we are at the Moundsville State Penitentiary. Um, my workshops are unlike any other workshops you'll ever find. In that, um, you know, a lot of other photography workshops, and I never speak ill of other photographers. But um, when I started doing workshops about two years ago, I decided I wanted to do ones that uh, were truly beneficial. Because a lot of photographers are out there trying to sell their stuff, and they'll do a workshop at a hotel where the conditions are controlled and everything's very easy. And I like to bring people to places that are just extremely challenging, which is a place like this, where we're shooting with, you know, just video lights and, you know, bars where people got murdered. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, all, we're at the Moundsville State Penitentiary. We've done the trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum three times. This is our first time here. And, uh, you know, and that's also very representative of the way that I shoot. Um, when I shoot, I shoot in crazy places. We do crazy things. Um, I'm just, I'm about 10% insane. <laughs> so you've shot all over the world. How did that happen? How did you get to that point? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting you ask that question. When people wonder how I got to where I am or have the opportunities to shoot where I shoot, it's honestly about desire. Um, you have to work harder than anybody else. You have to go places people aren't willing to go and do things people aren't willing to do. Um, I remember the first... I, I started my business in 2007. I was actually a hotel executive for Starwood, and I got sick of sitting in an office and listening to people tell me what to do. And so I decided to follow my dream and uh, became a photographer. People thought I was crazy, leaving a great job. And I, my wife just said, "Look, as long as you make money, I don't care what you do." And so that first year, I ended up shooting 35 weddings, and then we were voted the best photographer in Los Angeles by Fox TV. And then um, it just progressed from there. We were asked, they, they took my landscapes and gifted it to the um, Celebrities of Latin Grammy Awards in 2009. And, and I was featured, my photography was featured on a spot for Lifetime TV. And then, you know, just, it just really kind of started exploding from there. But, you know, it's interesting, I became known for wedding photography. And then I just said, you know, I really love landscapes. So I'm just going to Africa and I'm going to shoot them. So I went to Africa. And then I really love this and that, and Ireland, I was in Ireland too. Anyways, I mean, I've been to, all, I've been to six of the seven, seven continents, and uh, you know, I, my photography, if you look at it, it's landscape photography with people in it. It's really what it is, and that's why when people see my photography, they'll describe it as being almost painting-like, or they'll, they'll think that I Photoshop in stuff, or I don't do that. Really, okay, so, um Photography today, and we're talking digital photography, you're not spending time in, uh, you know, the days of the, of the dark room, 
have sort of passed and gone. But very much so. Yeah, very much so. But processing has not gone. I mean, there is absolutely um, a process to photography. Talk to me a little bit about your, your process. That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> you know what separates professionals from non-professionals is not only how you shoot, but it's how you finish your product. A lot of, you know, a lot, one of the main questions I get from people now is that um, how, how do you compete when everyone owns a good camera, when everyone is a photographer? How do you get weddings when Uncle Joe or Aunt Barbara can just go shoot the wedding? And I say, well, look at my pictures and look at Uncle Joe's or Aunt Barbara's. <laughs> um, so that's, 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 it's perfect to talk about the process because um, it's what separates us. And as for me, you know, I take all of my images in and I process them. I develop them is what I call it through Adobe Lightroom. Okay. And I do everything in Lightroom, and then I'll take about, you know, from a wedding, if I shoot a thousand images, um, I, and if I deliver 800 of those images, the bride would get what I call my signature look, which is where it's more of a painting-like look. They'll get that on about 3-5% to 5 of their images, and those are all done in Photoshop. Okay, right, absolutely. So, um, so you say that this is uh, your home, second home. Second home. So t tell me about that. You know, it's interesting. I do workshops um, differently in another way in that I found there were people who wanted to go to a good photography workshop but they couldn't afford it because where are the good photography workshops? LA, New York, Miami, Chicago. And I came up with a, uh, a way, all of my workshops were born out of my Facebook page. And so I came up with a way and I just told people if you can find five people and those five people want me to come out, I'll come and do a workshop. And so I had uh, had some folks out here, um, you know, contact me to come out and do a workshop in Morgantown. And I said, "Hey, if you guys can get five people, I'll be there." They got five people. I came out, and that first time we had such an amazing experience that um, it just grew from there. What pulls me here? It's a combination of three things. First and foremost, I love the people. Um, you know, I, somebody made the comment to me yesterday, one of the, the attendees, she said, you know, you don't seem like a Californian. I said, well, you know, there's probably truth to that. I lived my whole life there, but uh, my, my, my dad was a farm boy, and, uh, and I was raised like one. And so I have a deep affinity for kind of really down-to-earth people. And so um, when I met the people out here, they're so real, and they're so genuine. and that comes across and comes through in the workshops and, and the time that we spend together. Because quite honestly, when we're doing these workshops, um, you know, they're scheduled for like six or seven hours. We always go for like 14. And I don't charge them any extra, I just love what I'm doing. So first and foremost is the people, uh, people like Vander and others. The second reason is um, I love the topography, I love the landscape, I love the colors. Um, we're, we're talking about doing a workshop again in like three months because I want to come back here for the winter time. I want to see it when it's in the winter time. Mm -hmm. That's how I see most photographers, they wouldn't do a workshop in the winter time. I'll pack up all my snow gear and be out in six degree weather. So, um, yeah, I, so first it would be the people, second it would definitely be, um, it would definitely be for the landscapes and the topography. And third, and I'll be honest with you, it's, it's the structures. Um, you know, California, for example, you'd be hard pressed to find places that are and I mean this in a very complimentary way, you, you, you have a hard time finding places that are quote unquote abandoned or they're just not torn down. In California, if something is no longer used, it's taken down and something else put up in this place. I love, love, love old stuff. And West Virginia is full of it. And so, you know, even on the drive here to Moundsville from Morgantown, you just, we almost didn't make it on time because we're passing so many places and there's so many places we want to shoot. And so it's. It, I think it would be those three things: the people, the landscape, and then the, just the structure and the history. Mm -hmm. I mean, coming to a, I mean, an old penitentiary that's supposedly haunted. That's just freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one workshop that covers several days? Yes. Is that how it works? Yeah. The first two days we actually did a lot of classroom teaching. The first day. Um, I, I was here um, on Monday. We did uh, the entire thing was uh, how I made it. You can too, because see, in our industry, photographers are unbelievably competitive. They do not share information. That I'm telling you, they don't. And um, I don't mean this to sound any other way than it does. But I'm so confident in what I do, it actually it enables me to share everything. 
because I don't worry about it. And so as a result, um, I share everything from you know, what, you know, what programs I use, how I do it, what makes me successful, all my tips and tricks to how I get, got, gain business and, and everything. So we did that the first day. We did five hours in the classroom, then we shot for about five hours afterwards. It was only supposed to be two hours, but we went about five. And then the second day, we did an entire session on editing. Because one of the main things that slows younger photographers down, and even older photographers, is uh, their lack of ability to edit properly and quickly. You know, most photographers take you know, 20 hours to edit a wedding, it should take five. Wow, that's fascinating. So talk to me a little bit about what you're teaching them in the field. Give me an example of a, of a lesson. Uh, well, um, one of the main things is exposure. Most photographers don't even, the, you know, the M on the switch on their camera for manual, it terrifies them. And so they're either in a priority mode, like aperture shutter priority, where it chooses those parameters for you, or it's a program mode where it chooses everything for you. And one of my, again, back to one of my things, if you want to differentiate yourself from other photographers, the first thing you need to do is your work has to be different. And so one of the main things I teach these guys before we get into any of this, like trick lighting, all this stuff, is if they can't get their exposure right, we don't move on to this stuff. Because that's the foundation of photography. Before you get into composition, before you get into anything, if you can't expose a picture and your clouds are blown out, then it's just, it stinks. And I'll tell you what, that's why people think my clouds are fake. It's because I actually expose for the clouds. See, when your camera is looking at everything, it's metering for everything it sees in the picture. And it's just picking the nice middle ground. And when it picks that middle ground, that's why it blows out the clouds, because it's exposing for your face. So I always expose for like the clouds, for example, and then the clouds are nice and puffy and dramatic and beautiful. And then it will either use alternative lighting like video lights, flash, something else to expose for your face, and then we can bring the front subject into proper exposure. Wow, great. Perfect. Is there anything you want to add? Any other thoughts that you might have? Um, I'm just very grateful to you for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you. Um, anything else that I'd want to add? Um, you know, I'm a, I really love helping other uh, photographers out. So if there's any photographers that are looking for a workshop to help them grow them, to help them grow, um, let me know. I'd love to be able, be able to assist you. And uh, especially if there's any brides, I love shoot weddings. So if there's any brides out there that want anything, let me know. This is my spiel. And then the last thing would be if uh, you know uh, I'm coming out with a new website in about two weeks, and there's going to be a, the act, the ability for people to purchase all of my fine art landscapes and such. Great. Perfect. So it's amazing. Okay. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah.